Hello and welcome to the Monster Magic Review of The Fall, because I need the subscribers. Yes, this is The Fall. It is uh, the latest magic trick by Noel Qualter, and it's been causing somewhat of a stir on the old cafe and the, all other social media environments due to... Um, Basically, I think, I think reviewers failing, failing to agree on whether or not it's a good trick or whether it's misleading and, and all sorts of scandalous comments and backwards and forwards. Oh, it's been a joy. It's been a joy. And um, I thought um, I've got a little channel, a review show channel. It doesn't get very many views and this is a chance to get more subscribers. So there you go. I'm going to disclose how much skin I've got in the game right from the outset. And uh, if you do like this review, please subscribe. Um, I do know Noel Qualter. He is an acquaintance. I have met him um, quite often. Um, I'm a member of the Magic Circle and he's there at pretty much every Monday night. And um, so that's one point. I do know Steve Faulkner who does the Real Magic Review. Um, he's an acquaintance. I probably see him once or twice a year at a convention and uh, pretty much have to say hello and how are you. Um, I know Craig Petty's mentioned something on this. Um, I did an interview with Craig Petty. And funny enough, before this interview, I actually rang Craig and uh, just to say um, hello and say what I was doing. And um, he, uh, he answered, he said, uh, hello, who's this? I said, Alex. He said, Alex who? I said, Alex Kirk. And uh, he took a couple of seconds to realize who I was. So that's how well I know Craig. Um, uh, who else? Um, Scott Perry has done a review of it. I don't know Scott at all. I have tried uh, to ring him. I've texted him, WhatsApp him and rung him uh, to see if he um, uh, could speak to me about his review. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, he hasn't answered. Um, and Alakazam have done a little bit on it. Um, I have met Pete Nardi at the London Magic Convention, um, which was a few months ago now, and had a brief chat with him, um, but don't know him at all socially, don't, you know, haven't got contacts with him or anything like that, and I've never met uh, his son, Harry. Um, so there you go. So that's my skin in the game is basically, um, yeah, I want to be honest, I want to be open, I want to try and embrace everything, I want to set the record straight one way or another, and um, I'd like you to subscribe to my channel. There you go. So, what is The Fool? The Fool by Noel Qualter is, and I shall, I have written it down, uh, an approach to the card through window plot, 100% practical, 20 a night repeatable for real people in the real world. Now, before we go any further than that, um, it is an approach to card through window. There's no window involved. It won't work with a window or a glass table. So that's uh, that, that's that. But it is an approach. Um, it is practical, I'd say. We'll get into more details on that. 20 night repeatable. Um, yes, you could do it 20 times a night if you liked. Um, real people in the real world. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't perform for anybody other than real people. And um, I only know this world. So I guess that's true. Uh, so uh, moving on, um, that's the marketing blurb anyway. I think I always take that with a pinch of salt would be my advice. Um, so there you go. A visual penetration of uh, a playing card through plastic. That is exactly what it is. It, um, that sums it up very nicely. It is a visual penetration of a playing card through plastic. Um, that card can be forced if you want, but um, Noel doesn't seem to do it that way. Um, sometimes just put, just say it's a random card and flip it on, flip it onto the piece of plastic. Um, but it is very visual. It is very visual. It, the card does appear to melt through the plastic and fall into someone's hands. That is completely correct. Um, perfect walk around miracle. Mm. Perfect's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure anything really is perfect. Is there the perfect magic trick? I don't know. If you were performing this um, for um, a plastic bag manufacturer, um, then perhaps it would then be um, perfect if, um, if, if, you know, but it could be perfect for someone. This is by no way a bad trick. And I think even Scott says that in some of his comments afterwards uh, of his review, uh, he does actually say it's not a terrible trick and it does work. And that is that, that is very honest. It, it isn't terrible. It does work. And in fact, it's quite good. It's not the trick that I would normally do. For me, it, um, it does involve far too much faff for me to actually usually um, perform it. But having played with it more and more and more, um, and I, you know, I was probably a bit daunted when I first opened the box. The more I've played with it, the more I've grown to love it. And I reckon this trick is good, especially for a hobbyist. If you want to go down the pub or you've got a social event coming up, 
I would take this with me. I would advise you to take it with you and I would perform it on people. Um, it is really good. It's a lot of fun to perform. It's a bit bold to perform, which makes it fun. Um, but when it works and when that card penetrates through, you will get gasps and you will get a nice little buzz and a glowing feeling. So I can recommend it for any, any hobbyist, anyone who's doing tricks for friends and family. This, this is ideal. And you can repeat it at the same social event. No problem at all. Completely repeatable. Um, so there you go. That's a bit of a rundown, rundown of the trick. Now let's get to, let's try and break this down in some organized manner. I have my notes here. Um, what do you get? Well, you get the smart box. You get the bag. Uh, this is an ordinary bag. You can replace it if you want a smaller bag, a larger bag, or in fact a piece of acetate um, that Noel um, has also suggested you could use. In fact, the first time I saw Noel do this was at a South London uh, magic event and he used acetate. Um, the gimmick was different then. There wasn't the extra gimmick. Um, it wasn't such a good trick as it is now, um, but you do use a plastic bag. You get, um, I've I can probably tell you this now because uh, it's been revealed, you get some uh, black tack putty, you get the instructions and you get the gimmicks. Now, um, the gimmicks are called precision gimmicks. Uh, I think they are. Um, Scott mentions in his review that they're handmade, um, and they are hand. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, they are handmade. But Scott points out that handmade doesn't necessarily mean that they are made simply. You know, it's not as simple as going well. They make them by their hands because you could say that about most things, and it wouldn't really be a, a bonus. He sort of feels that it means it's something that you couldn't just do yourself. It involves a bit of craftsmanship and that he thinks that these gimmicks uh, don't match that description. Now, one of the gimmicks probably doesn't. One of the gimmicks uh, is, is, is very easy to make, again, if you wanted to. Um, so Scott's correct on that point. But, but these ones, the cards that you use um, for the penetration, I would say they will be incredibly hard to recreate. Um, I'm guessing how they're made. But I would say you'd be able, you'd have to split cards. You'd have to be able to to cut the uh, cut, cut perfect holes, the exact diameter of uh, the little gimmicks that go in them, uh, perfectly in exactly the right place on every card that you did, and then glue that all together to make it look like an ordinary playing card. And um, certainly the one that a spectator. Um, ends up with in their hands is, is, is examinable. I can't, I can't feel a thing on this one. Um, so for me, I would not be able to make this gimmick. Um, a craftsman has made this gimmick, in my opinion. Uh, it is a very well-made thing, and it does have to be precision because they do have uh, to match uh, completely. So there's a lot of alignment going on there. So it's not as simple as um, as it looks, uh, and I would certainly say that they are handmade gimmicks. Um, you get the little black tech thing. You also get uh, something else. I'm not sure. I don't want to go into too many of the gimmicks. So you get all of the gimmicks that are required. Um, and that's pretty much all I've got to say. You do get a nice box. You get a nice box. Mine's blue. Um, I will say, obviously, now how um, there was some controversy over whether or not this has been performed or anything else. Uh, Noel actually gave me this one um, a day or two ago because I'd been practicing and I've been using the one I had and uh, I've lost some of the bits. Um, I haven't lost them. I've mislaid them. I am terrible. This is why this is just this is why this trick probably isn't for me. I can't keep what, anything in the same place. Uh, so there you go. So how easy is it? Well, it's pretty easy, I would say. Um, it isn't. Well, it's not difficult. There are no tricky sleight of hand at all in this trick. Um, you don't have to be Leonard Green, you don't have to do any 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 sort of traditional slights at all. I personally um, riffle force, um, I force the card um, on, you know, I have someone just say stop and force the card. Noel doesn't do that. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. It doesn't seem to be necessary at all because it's not part of the trick. Um, you can just say it's a random card. The thing is this, this, this card's passed through the plastic, so that isn't necessary at all. The practice, you do need to practice it, and that um, it just is a bit of a faff. I'll, I'll tell you why it's a bit of a faff because you need this spread out. You need, you know, you need to mimic someone or two people holding this. So um, I think Noel suggests using some cans, some cans, which um, 
is fine or some clamps or however you need to do that um, so that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a bit of, bit of a pain but other than that you just need to spend I spent half an hour uh, playing with it and it's more about getting to learn how the gimmick works than any trick sleight of hand anything you basically you want to know how to get into the trick how to how to have everything positioned how you want it um, so, so getting into the trick takes a bit of practice and performing the trick and, and, and getting the gimmick to work requires a bit of practice but it's not difficult it really isn't it's well within the realms of um, pretty much any hobbyist I would say a beginner I would say even a beginner uh, could do this trick Scott does point out one very important thing is that you do need to be able to hide a card in um, well in the palm of your hand but you don't have to palm it that is, is, is not the case at all you don't have to palm it there's no curvature palming can be scary because you're holding something out um, and also you have to get the card from the top of the deck onto your palm and that requires misdirection and knowledge of how to get the card to uh, get up into your hand. I don't talk too much about palming, but palming is a skill for sure. This is um, skillless, uh, essentially, as long as you can slap, as long as you can get like that, um, you'll be absolutely fine. The card does have to fit into your hand. It doesn't have to fit into the palm, it can be lowered down. I think everyone just needs to find the widest part of your hand, doesn't matter where it is, whether it's usually it's sort of across these four fingers and down, but sometimes it could be wherever you like. So you can almost cover it with your wrist if you've got um, uh, a shirt sleeve or a jacket and that can even help if you want to do it that way if you've got particularly small hands I'd probably suggest then you can, you can use your cuffs and have it lower down you can still do it so it doesn't have to be in the palm of your hand at all so if you've got smallish hands most magicians claim to have small hands because that's their excuse for not being able to do all of the knuckle busting slights but you can cheat and almost have the bottom half of it covered by your sleeve um, so um, yeah, in the comments on some of these videos, um, as well, Scott pointed out uh, when, uh, when asked about the, the, the whether it could be done by everyone, he said you have to have um, some people might have fingers missing. Now that is true. I think if you possibly, unless you want to use it down covering your sleeve, I would suggest if you have got some fingers missing. I don't know how many uh, professional magicians have fingers missing these days, but but um, if you do have your fingers missing, then then this possibly isn't the right trick for you. Uh, you can do it without a thumb though, if it's only your thumb missing that's not an issue at all, you're golden, you can still do it. Um, but yeah otherwise be, be aware that you you know you, 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 can, you can align the card, it's a slap motion and uh, no one is really, because it's so quick, any flash from the side even, um, you, you still get away with it. So um, it is fine, I would say, I mean really, uh, it is well within the grasps of any hobbyist. I'm going out there and saying that it isn't difficult and there aren't very many um, restrictions at all. Um, reset time. Now reset time, Noel says it's about five seconds in, uh, I think in the in the blurb um, that comes with, with, with the fool. I can't get it down to five seconds yet. For me it's more like 15 to 20. But again I reset uh, my JOL wallet with the bonds delope, um, walking from table to table, that takes 10 seconds at least I imagine, I've never timed it. Um, this, you know, what, it's one of those things, the reset time will come down the more you do it. But yeah, um, I suppose if you're, if you're describing this trick as the perfect walk around trick, a perfect walk around trick would have no reset whatsoever. So if you really want, if you really want to be pernickety then that is the case. But again, I don't know if I'm a professional Sometimes I just go to my case and I pick up pick up a couple of extra things and I might, I might only do those things twice a night. Um, so it's still still professionals might still well use it despite that reset time. For an amateur, if I'm going and I'm doing this at a um, friend's birthday party or, or you know wherever I might be, whatever social event it is, I'm more than happy to to, to nip and find somewhere quiet and, and just reset it. And it's only 20 seconds. You'll be walking anywhere for 20 seconds um, and reset it and carry on performing it throughout the night so I, you know yeah I, yeah I don't really think the reset time is a big issue it's not a difficult reset by any means it doesn't you, you can do it standing up walking along so you don't need any tables you don't need to lay anything out you don't need to make any ordering adjustments to the deck none of that stuff really at all you're just putting a card back in the deck really and um, putting the gimmick and so on back on the deck so um, reset time is not difficult it doesn't take up a load of space it takes 
10 to 20 seconds, um, but you could easily get that, that time down. Angles, so I suppose this is part of the practicality bit, and uh, um, angles, angles, angles are perfect on this, um, you know, oh, whoops, I've said the word perfect, haven't I? Angles, you can perform this completely surrounded by people, and they will not see what you are doing, okay? Absolutely fine to be completely surrounded by people, and in fact, um, I think Scott was the one who mentioned that the angles were an issue and he couldn't perform it surrounded. He's since clarified in one of his comments that he doesn't mean that they'll find out how it's done or, or, or that there's an angle issue with the method. What it means is that because you've got two people holding the plastic sheet and yourself, if there's someone who is um, shorter than the people hold standing directly behind the people holding the plastic and there's someone smaller than yourself standing directly behind you they clearly can't see through you so they won't be able to see the magic so what he's pointing out there is that someone standing directly behind you cannot see what you're doing in front of you um, which yes I, it is is completely true but I don't think that makes this trick angle sensitive. It just means you've got someone standing behind you, you might want to ask them to come around to the front so that they can actually see what's going on. Um, so I think that was a funny, very weird thing that Scott said. Um, and, and to clarify, I think he was, I, I can't explain what that is about at all. It is completely angle free. Uh, he also says that you can't do it on people shorter than you. You can do it on people shorter than you. You will have an issue if you've got uh, two parents. So say you've got a family and you've got two parents holding the plastic bag at chest height and they've got a child who is lower than their chest height. So you really don't want anyone looking up at the plastic. You don't really want them level with the plastic. You want people looking down. Now, obviously, you could just ask the child to hold it. That would be a very simple way of getting around that. Um, even if you've got two children, children love being involved. Just get them to hold the plastic. Everyone else will be looking down on it just fine. But yeah, so you do have to have some audience management, possibly, if you are in that situation. But most of the time, with a family it's fine, I'd have the child hold it, or um, yeah, or, or I'm just not, you know, most of my working events there aren't very children around, um, so it, there's a small point there, but that doesn't stop it being um, a very good magic trick in any way. Uh, pocket space, now pocket space, um, pocket space you've got this bag, you've got a bag and a pack of cards, basically is what you've got, uh, so it does take up a pocket, you have dedicated probably dedicated a deck of cards to it. You don't have to, you can just have the gimmicks inside and just add them to an ordinary deck of cards. So the deck of cards is essentially ordinary. You just have to add the gimmicks to it. Um, if you're really worried about carrying an extra deck, I would do it that way. This would probably be, for me, I'd be doing it with this in my back uh, rear buttock pocket, because uh, my left rear buttock, because that pocket I just never really use. I'm right-handed. I'll go into these pockets much longer before I do that one. And uh, the gimmicks um, I have in my wallet, so if I want to do the trick, I take them out and I put them in the deck of cards that I've been using uh, previously. So I haven't actually dedicated a deck of cards to it. Some people may want to, if it was just if it was the only trick I was going to be doing uh, that night, um, say at a social event or whatever for friends, then maybe I would, but then I I'd could easily take the, take the cards out later in the night and um, perform all my other magic with that with the deck of cards just fine. So um, pocket space isn't a big deal at all. If you want to do this trick, and it is a very visual card through, ban through, through plastic bag, then uh, I don't think pocket space is, um, is going to stop you. So that's it, that is the Monster Magic Review of The Fool by Noel Quarter. The eagle-eyed among you might notice that the camera angle has changed and the lighting has changed because I've had to recharge the phone twice to film this um, just because uh, I didn't charge it at the very start. Um, this is The Fool by Noel Quarter. It isn't a perfect walk-around trick, I'm guessing, because it does involve a reset. It is, a, it is a perfectly good angle-proof, highly visual, card-through plastic bag which um, is pretty much how you consider it if you are willing to give it the time and effort to, to learn it and practice it which is it, you know is, is probably not inconsiderable it's about half an hour or an hour possibly to nail it down but that's not including the whole setup time of getting the bag straight um, you'll have a lot of fun with it I think I'd really really believe you do um, like I say I've got no skin in the game I don't stock this in any way I'm not affiliated to anyone I do know all these I do, I do I do this occasionally bump into these people but I've got no skin in the game all I'm after is for you to subscribe 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 subscribe